Hello and welcome to another episode of the Dualpreneur Virtual Mastermind. I am your host and founder of Dualpreneur, Tara Jackson, aka Madam Money. And I am super excited about today's session. I'm excited about all of them, but my big brother, the network king and the master pro networker is in the building today. And mm -hmm. woo -woo, what I love about Corey is I've always known him for networking events and everything, but you know, he is, you're an accountant by trade, right? By trade. By trade, he's an taxes. accountant, but <laughs> he is the most non-accountant person I've ever met, but he holds these awesome networking events in Atlanta, Georgia, right? I mean, right. phenomenal. H hundreds of people, probably thousands of people have come to his event just to network networking event so he is a master of that so if you ever want to hold a networking event you got to connect and get consulted by Corey Moore the network king um, but he's here because we're having some challenges uh, right now with the coronavirus the pandemic and the quarantine if you're watching this after you kind of know what we experienced and now we're trying to get back to normal but there are some things that we have to do differently the new normal and we yeah. still need to connect with other entrepreneurs <laughs> people like-minded let me you know why is it important because if I'm feeling challenged there could be other people out there that are feeling the same way or have felt the way I felt and have some solutions so collaboration um, needs to still happen, even connecting with our customers, our potential customers, as well as existing customers. Well, how do we do that now? How do we really leverage? Why should we leverage? Um, that's why I had to get the expert of networking in the building, Mr. Corey Moore, the pro networker, the network king, my big brother, my ace boom yeah. cool, yeah, <laughs> all that jazz. Corey, all how you doing jazz. today, boo? You know what? I cannot complain at all. Um, I've been telling people that we are over here making some Corona lemonade. Um, <laughs> please, nobody hashtag that. Take, don't take that. If you do take it, just say Corey Network okay. King said it first because I haven't I, heard. I, I'll, I'll give you credit the first two times and then it's kind of <laughs> mine, but okay. <laughs> I'm sure somebody else has said it, but I ain't seen it no place, so please don't take that. But everything's going okay. Cannot cannot complain with you know due to circumstance, but cannot complain after that. So awesome. Well, as people are coming in, um, we want to thank you one for joining us today to share some things. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what are some ways we can network our network. Definitely, definitely. So again, thank you for having me. We have networked with each other for years. Long time. Long time. Um, and it's all about, and, and it still has an example of why it's always important to build your network, build your database, build relationships with people, because you never know what types of things that you guys are going to do in the future with each other. So, you know, you and I are a perfect example of that. You and I have been networking with each other for years, might not have done actual business with each other, but, but still networking and still building each other's resources and being a value to each other. So, so that's actually huge, but um, yes, I am an accountant. I own an, uh, a tax company. We've been doing taxes ever since 2005. I am um, an EA, <clears throat> which is an extroverted accountant. Um, actually EAs know that's something actually different, but, but no, I, and I've been doing, I built my whole accounting firm through networking. The first time that I actually went to a networking event, um, I came out of uh, business to business sales. So with that, somebody had to show me how to network. They're like, Hey, why don't you come out and network? And I was like, what is that? So they took me to a networking event and that, and I, and this whole concept of actually meeting somebody, telling them what you do. They then say, hey, I need that. They then give you money. I was like, oh, this is, this is awesome. So I did it again and that happened. I did it again and that would happen. <clears throat> so I got to this point where it's just like, wow, everybody needs to know about this networking. And on my tax side, I had clients whose businesses were growing. And I'd say, hey, what are you doing? Hey, I'm out here. I'm out here networking. I'm out here meeting people, things of that nature. Then I actually had clients who their business wasn't growing. And I said, hey, what, um, you know, are you out here networking? <clears throat> and they would typically say, no, and give me an excuse of why they weren't networking. So not only did I see that networking played a huge factor in my business, 
but I actually saw where it played a huge factor in other people's business. So I then started doing more research on networking, trying to learn more about it, trying to understand it more. And really to get, got to that point of saying, you know what, it's not just me that this is happening, that there's other people who are, and we're not talking about a difference between going from two to three, we're talking about a, a difference of night and day difference of what networking has been doing for their business. So I, pre, I pretty much became, let's call it a networking advocate. Uh, we started letting people know about other networking events that were, <clears throat> excuse me, happening around Atlanta. We did not want anybody to miss out on a networking event. Um, created a newsletter with different networking events that were happening around Atlanta, um, sent that to people. As we started um, finding out about more events, our database as far as people started growing. We then took that list that was on an email, we then took it to a website. So then started putting the events on the website. That website, we then took it from the website and then added a phone app to that. So now, um, if you go to pronetworker.com or if you go to your, um, your app store, you can download our, our, um, our app, of finding different networking events that are happening around Atlanta. So that's been pretty much how we've grown. We've been doing this now. This year would be uh, 10 years in August for Pro Networker. So we're super excited about that. Um, things have been going well, but but you're, you're very right, uh, Tara, regarding um, today and what the environment is and how networking now is represented in there. And I'm really glad that you asked me to do this because there have been so many people that said, hey, you know, my business is being threatened right now. My business is severely being threatened right now. Um, I either want to network or, or, or I haven't networked yet or I was an avid networker. Now what do I do? So this is actually the first of uh, many workshops that we're going to be doing talking about uh, what you should actually do now. So um, should I go ahead and get into Yes, sir. Wonderful. So what I'm going to do is this. And actually, I have a little funny story. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see here. All right. So funny story is I have this, um, you know, we, we're networking advocates. So we do a lot of workshops regarding networking. And I went to a previous presentation that I that I did called networking works and the secrets of networking and as I was going through the presentation I was like wow like there really is no big difference between what someone should have done before COVID versus what they should be doing now there's a little tweak but if they actually did this networking before COVID then they wouldn't be as impacted right now. And I thought that that was actually pretty amazing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go through the presentation and most of the people who are watching this possibly haven't seen it. Those who have seen it good, they should see it again. But we're gonna go through it as it was at the beginning and then at the end, there's gonna be a couple little tweaks to it. But I'm gonna talk about really the importance of why this stuff was so important, especially right now. Um, so let me start off by this way, and I hate to give bad news at the beginning, but the reality is at least one person watching this presentation is going to lose their business. It is, it is, it is a fact, um, and I hate that our environment is like that right now, but I really want people to think about <clears throat> back in 2008 when the financial crisis hit, there was a lot of people who were losing their jobs, losing out financially and all of that. What 2008 was, was pretty much back in when we were in school, whether it was high school, probably in, more so in high school, you'd get to class and there would be what was called these pop quizzes. And sometimes you'd get to class and obviously you didn't know because it was a pop quiz. You didn't know it was coming. For those people who actually studied and had been reading along throughout the time period, they were fine. They knew the answers. And that's all that the pop quiz was. But for those of us that, that didn't read, we were the worried ones because we know that there was something that we did not do to prepare. Essentially, 
when situations like this happen, whether it's in our community or whether it's, it's nationwide or whether it's worldwide, these are just these pop quizzes. This one is kind of like a pop final exam where it's really asking, did you do the things to prepare? And at the end of the day, even with the business or without the business, there are certain things that we need to know about, which is budgets, making sure that we have uh, an efficient budget, a savings account, or in a business cash reserves. And in that savings account, at least one month, two months, three months, six months, sometimes up to 12 months. Now these are basics. These are the basics. For a person who has a job and is a W-2 employee that's getting paid every two weeks, and if you've been on your job for longer than, I'm gonna say two to three years or longer, I'm gonna go ahead and put a blanket statement out there. There's not many reasons why you shouldn't have three to six months to six to 12 months of living expenses in the bank. Now, if you tell me, oh no, that nothing major happened, I just have too many expenses. No, you just have a bad budget. For business owners, it's a little different. Sometimes what we do, and, and this part is, is really important to understand what we do. We are used to risking things. We are used to taking a step out on faith. We're used to betting it all and all of that. The problem is that when we do that, when there are situations that come about, such as these pop tests, these pop quizzes, these pop finals, these viruses, that this is now that final call of showing our hand. And if we are ready, then we are okay. But if we're not ready, then this is the result. And I hate to be that black and white with it, but that's really what it is. So the bad news of this is at least one person, I hope that it's only one, but at least one person is going to lose their business before this epidemic is over. But let me give you the good news. It doesn't have to be you. The fact that whoever is watching this right now, this video right now, has now increased their chances of survival, which is really important, very important. That person who actually sits back and sacrifices the time to get this information, they have increased their chances. Doesn't mean they're gonna survive. But as long as you increase it, that's what's good. The next piece to this is, let's just say worst case scenario that your business fails. Most entrepreneurs, this is nothing new to us. Failing is nothing new to us. With that, if you ask any successful business owner, they'll tell you how many multiple businesses have failed. But the beauty about that is you will actually know what to do now to, and what things to put in place to not fail that way. In my lifetime, I haven't, I have personally haven't seen anything that has affected the world like this. So this is kind of one of those outliers. But think about it like this. If you're able to actually fortify your business in a way to where if something financially affects the world, and you're still okay, then that means that your business is very sound, very sound. And regardless of what happens, you are actually okay to survive. So with that, we're gonna go over some things that, I'm gonna be honest, that if people had put in place in their business before this ec epidemic happened, that they would be further along right now. Again, no guarantees, but they would be further along on survival. So with that, typically when I, um, got started in my presentations, we would do a weapons check. And again, keep in mind, I am a face-to-face -face networking advocate, face-to-face. -face. So for me, that business card was my weapon. That business card was so powerful, which a lot of people really wouldn't understand how powerful the business card was. On that business card, you needed to make sure you had, obviously, your name, your phone number, email, just a website. But What's also important was to have the skills, the product and the services there, have an aesthetically pleasing design and have it on a card stock that actually people felt good about and use the back of the card. Where this would actually, when I talked about face-to-face -face network, and I wanna make sure this, everybody understands this, social media was never to replace 
face-to-face -face networking. It was complimentary. It was an add-on. So it was one to where people say, oh no, I do digital networking. Okay, which is more virtual, okay. But that doesn't replace business cards. There's something that, that virtual networking can do that face-to-face -face can't do, which is the reach. You cannot reach the same number of people with face-to-face -face networking as you can virtual networking. But at the end of the day, digital networking and virtual networking cannot compete against a good old-fashioned handshake. It just can't. There's other things that, can, that are actually a, available there with the business card is if you had a strong and effective business card, you should be able to leave your business card on the table, walk away, somebody else be able to pick up that business card, be able to see exactly what it is you do, and if they need you, to be able to call you and give you money. That is something that you can't do digitally. So it's always to understand, the first thing is to understand the difference of the two and the one to have a, a very good balance of both, of the digital or the virtual and the physical. Now, the next part when it comes to networking, most important thing is to understand the definition. Most people are networking wrong, networking incorrectly. And that is just because they don't understand what networking is. The definition of networking is um, two or more people sharing information that they have a common interest in. Two or more people sharing information that they have a common interest in. That is networking. Does anybody see the word sales in here? Anywhere? No. So with that, when you actually go to a networking event or when you have your, your networking hat on and you're looking to network, at any point in time, if you're looking for sales, if it's looking, you're trying to make a, this a sales transaction, you're actually doing it wrong. Networking is taking this information that you have and sharing it with other people. That's how you then get your business growing. Why do we need to network? If you sell a product or service, Multiple, most people need uh, most multiple people to buy. So it's one of those that if you have a business to where if one person buys it, buys a, your product or service, and you're set for life, great. Actually, if anybody has that business, please in the chat, uh, let me know what it is you do so I can happily change my business so that I can get into your business. But other than that, Typically, you need multiple people to buy what it is that you do. So with that, if you need multiple people, then that means you need to know multiple people. And the other thing is, for most business owners, 90% of your future clients are going to come from people you don't know. So with that, there's always this constant need of getting out there and meeting new people. We have this thing where it's called meet more people. Meet more people. In 2020, we have this... Um, this, this opportunity to say, hey, or this challenge to say, get out and meet more people. How are you going to meet more people? Now, again, right now, we can't really do that a lot on the physical aspect, but we definitely can still do that on the uh, virtual aspect. Now, what keeps people from networking? Typically, people don't like networking. Um, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of introverts in the world that just do not like networking. Uh, what they say is it's not really they don't like it, but it's more so of, of meeting people for them takes away their energy versus with an, an extrovert, new people give them energy or just people in general give them energy, uh, which is not good for your business. Your business needs people to actually meet. Uh, some people say never find the right people, no time to network. But a lot of people that also say don't like networking is because they feel like it's very transactional. They feel like it's salesy. They feel like people don't um, aren't really interested in what it is that they're doing, which is definitely a valid case. But just know that those people are doing it wrong. And again, we're going to get back why this is so important to understand this stuff. Because right now, when it deals with virtual, there is so much traffic on virtual right now. So the same things that you're gonna feel that you had a negative in physical networking, there's gonna be negatives in the virtual networking. But as long as you understand what those things are and you know the ways around them, then you can actually move forward and make sure that it doesn't impact your business. So 
I used to have this slide up that's talking about, now this part is really important for virtual right now. I used to have this, this slide up saying, hey, um, if you were watching this presentation and if you had a storefront, when you would get to your storefront in the morning and you would you know, gather everything, clean up everything off, whatever the case is, and when you were ready for business, you were ready for somebody to actually come in, what would you do? You would typically turn the, um, the open sign on to let people know outside, we're open for business, you can now come in. The problem is, if you did not have a storefront, how do people know that you're open? And typically it's if they see you. If you're at a networking event, that lets people know, oh, you're in business, oh, okay, because you're here. Sometimes when I wouldn't see people for a long time, I'd be like, yo, I wonder what happened to such and such. Then my next question was, I wonder if they're still in business. So what happens is when people aren't seeing you face to face, and not, now that, and I want everybody to really understand this, now that, that, that there are less opportunities meeting face to face, and let's just say 90% of the, opp the opportunities now are virtual. Everybody is now virtual and everybody is hearing on the news or people's businesses are going out of business. So that now means that there's a lot of people who's thinking, wow, there's gonna be a lot of people who are losing. There's, there are a lot of people losing their business. I wonder if such and such is losing theirs. I wonder if such and such is losing theirs. And if they don't hear from you, if they don't see you, whether it's physically or now virtually, this is now your sign. They're automatically have it in their head. Oh, wow, that, that person must have closed their business. I don't see them. You could be alive and well, but if your business right now is not online, is not visible, it's just like you're closed. And people are going to go with somebody else, your competitor, who their sign is open because they're just out in front of other people. So that part is really, really big. So, so with that, now, who do I look for at a networking event? Now, this is for the people who did this before uh, coronavirus. And I, and I want to stick with it even during coronavirus because if you don't, you're going to develop either bad habits, one, or you're still not going to get the results that you're looking for. So again, for those people who actually did this uh, before Corona, they should be in a better place. So for instance, so who do you look for at a networking event? We call it the three C's, a client, a collaborator, and a competitor. These are primarily the three types of people that most people are looking for when they go to a networking event. Now, out of these three, who should be the last person you should look for? Who's the last person? If you guys have a chat in there, uh, just real quick, just put in out of the three C's, a client, a collaborator, or a competitor. I want you guys to type in, who do you think the last person you should look for in there? And I'm gonna look at this real quick. Let's see if I can actually see it in the chat. Let's see what we have here. I don't think I can look at it while I'm doing that's okay. I can tell you. Um, everybody says the client, the client, the client. The last really? person I look for is the client. So. Okay, good. Looks like some people have, have seen my presentation. All right. I like that. <laughs> the last one is a client. That is the last person you should be looking for at a networking event. Why, you ask? Client is typically harder to find at a networking event. They, it is super rare to find somebody when you actually get to the event and they, you say, hey, this is my product. And they say, oh, you know what? I was looking for you today. So glad that I found you. Look, I got my money right here. How can I sign up? Does it happen? Yes, it does. But it is super rare. So with that, never have that expectation that that's going to happen. Um, when you do find a client, typically... When they buy is not when you want them to buy, they buy when they want to buy. So you might have a bill that's due this Friday, but they want to wait on it and probably do it sometime next month. So it's one of those to where you can't really rely on that client for them to buy when you want them to buy. Typically, it's a one-off transaction. Most times they say, hey, I gave you money. You gave me the product. That's it. 
Some may refer, but for the most, the majority, they don't. Because again, that's just, it's not that they don't want to, but it's just not what they're thinking about doing. That's the client, the collaborator. The collaborator is a person, and my suggestion is that you find somebody who needs you to help their client complete a transaction. Now, there are certain transactions that are out there that are contingent, contingent upon other things. So for instance, a real estate agent needs a mortgage broker so that their client can purchase the house. They need multiple other people on that transaction in order for it to actually close. If you have one of those services, you definitely want to make sure that you are able to see how many people you actually need that is a part of that transaction, and you make sure that you have a good relationship with multiple people in each one of those positions. In real estate, there's probably anywhere between five to seven people that are on that one transaction. And like a real estate agent should not just have a relationship with a mortgage broker should be with an insurance agent, which should be with a closing attorney, should be with the, um, an inspector, um, things of that nature. So you definitely want to know who these people are and for them to know who you are. Um, the next one is find a person who compliments your product. For me as a tax advisor, I'm always sitting down with my clients, talking to them about their taxes, but then the next conversation I'm having with them is about retirement. And have they started thinking about their retirement plans and stuff like that? So for me, a collaborator is a, is a financial planner. It's the same thing that a financial planner is typically talking to their clients about uh, strategies as far as reducing their taxes. That's where now I come in. So our businesses don't need each other to complete the transaction, but we very much so complement each other. Anytime that I find a financial advisor, they typically refer me multiple clients, not just one or two. So it's one of those to where I would, if I, if I had to, I'd rather find a financial advisor than an actual client because I know that typically that financial advisor is going to refer more business to me than that actual client will. So now my goal is to try to find as many financial advisors as possible. In your business, you want to think about who are people who you typically talk about when you're doing a transaction with a client or people who your client asks about where you say, oh no, I don't do that. If there's something where they ask you and you say, I don't do that, that's typically gonna be um, a, a collaborator for you. You wanna find them so now you can say, hey, I don't do that. This person does, hey, let me make that introduction to you so that hopefully that person would do that back and forth with you. So. And a competitor. You know, I love doing these presentations because most times when we come up to a competitor and most times I hear, Corey, if, why would I do business with a competitor? Like, why would I do that? Here are some of the opportunities, especially now, especially with everything that's happening right now. The opportunities are product knowledge and competitive edge. If you, with me networking with my competitors, there's often times that I actually learn more about the actual industry itself. They may have researched something that I haven't or whatever the case is, especially if I know what their services are and I know what their prices are, I now can adjust mine in such a way to kind of give me that competitive edge because I have that information. I can then actually, I've had clients where they said to me, okay, great. I see what you're charging, see what you do. Hey, I'm going to go check out the competition. And I would actually tell them, oh yeah, you should hey, when you get there, here's what you're going to find. And I would tell them exactly what their experience was going to be. And I would then get a call back from them saying, yep, you were right. This is what it was. That lets them know, yeah, I've done my homework. Like, I'm, I'm not just um, out here just for me. No, I want to protect you and what it is that you're doing. So that kind of gives them that confidence. Keeps your business focus, keeps your business focus in your target market. Everybody's heard of the phrase, stay in your lane okay we want to and it's always one of those things that if you make pies if you're the best pie maker in the world everybody comes from far from near and far to get your pies somebody's gonna ask you well you make pies can you make cake and the thing is you know they're both desserts and it's not too far from doing it 
But if you want to get money in, you might say, well, yeah, let me go ahead and bake your cake real quick. I normally don't do it. What that ends up doing is get you off your big business focus. Versus if you were to find somebody who makes cakes, you can now create a relationship with them so that now you can say, no, no, I don't make cakes, but this person does. And you can stay on your focus on making pies. And now what happens is you can even build a relationship with that cake maker person. Hey, when I refer you to somebody, let me get a cut or give me a referral fee or whatever, or let, let me add it to my business model, my revenue model. So now you're still making money, but you're not having to change your focus. Huge, huge. Continuous referrals with competitors that do the same, kind of the same thing that you do, but if they do it a little bit different, like in my tax business, there are some people who, yeah, I do taxes, but I don't do taxes for anybody that has a rental property. Oh, well, I do. Great. They will now refer me multiple business because any time that they run into somebody that, does, that has a rental property, they're going to refer them to me. Huge. They could go out of business. Again, right now, this is, unfortunately, this is the environment. There's going to be businesses that have already and will continue to go out of business. But they have clients that still need that service. Now, I want everybody to listen to this because this part is super important. Typically, the average person doesn't think about doing business with their competitor. So with that, if I have 100 clients and I don't think about doing business with my competitor and I go out of business, who am I going to give these 100 clients to? Versus if, if I have a relationship with, with Tara and I know that we do the same thing and we've been buddy-buddy with each other and it's not been a competitive, we are competitors, but we're not competitive with each other. And I call her and I say, listen, yeah, I think we're about to go out of business, but listen, I want to make sure that my clients have a place to land. Will you take my clients? I am sure she will say, yes, for you, Corey, just for you, Corey, I will do that. But the only way for her to get that, those clients from me is for her to have built a relationship with me. That's the only way. In my tax business, I have gotten three of these phone calls to where somebody said, hey, we're about to uh, stop doing taxes, but you are on what's called a short list of competitors that we actually have built a relationship with. How would you like our competitor? How would you like our, our, our client base? I just got off of a client of, of a call yesterday from a client that paid me a little over $500 and they were referred to me by another tax business that went out of business back in 2012 and they are still on my books so that just keeps going and going this one is a big one and that's because for me when it when i was out networking i would love to find a competitor so that we can build a relationship with each other love to find a competitor because again if i felt like i was going to be in business longer than them then i would want them to use me if they were ever gonna lead the business or whatever the case is. So that one is huge. Um, the last one under that is a resource for your clients who you want to fire. Here's the reality. <laughs> I have had some clients in the past that, let me be politically correct. We just didn't have the right uh, business uh, mindset with each other, but the right chemistry with each other. They would probably be happier, possibly with somebody else just based on my systems or whatever the case is. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Everybody's had that client where you're just like, man, I don't know what I want to do with you. But here's the thing. You can call your competitor and be like, hey, Tara, listen, I, listen, I got this perfect client for you. you oh, you're going to love them. You're going to love them. So with that, if you have a relationship with a competitor, you can do things like that. So again, under the competitor, you want to find a person who has a similar product or service but doesn't do everything that you do. That's the biggest key doesn't do everything that you do, who needs you to help their clients and makes them look better. Um, again, you may be the only, you may be the only competitor they have a relationship with. Oh, please understand that. You may be the only person 
the only competitor that they have a relationship with. So with that, if anything happens, they're going to call you. Uh, types that they can either be smaller, the same size, bigger, same product, different product, whatever the case is. But again, you still want to make sure that you're having that relationship with them. So with that, now who would you look for at a networking event? For me, I would love to find competitors. I would love, love, love to find competitors because I, I, I knew that this was going to be a, a referral source that was coming for me. So based on all of that, if you now look at right now, as far as networking is concerned, everyone is now going online virtually and they're networking virtually and stuff like that. So now it's like, okay, what are we looking for? Everybody's looking for clients. Everybody's looking for clients. But I really want people to act, to understand the same thing. Everybody's online right now looking for these three C's but it's still the same type of networking. Who should be the last person that you're looking for? It should still be the last person should be a client. You should not be looking for a client. You should be looking for either that collaborator or that competitor right now. So if you have not done that in your business before, you really need to do that now. Really need to do that now because what's gonna end up happening is the referral, Anytime that there's too much traffic any place, a person is looking for a decision that's going to be more comfortable for them. A client is going to be looking for a decision that's more comfortable. What's more comfortable is a trusted source. So if my trusted source says, hey, um, are you looking for a tax person? And I say, yeah, I am. But I'm online. I see all this traffic. Man, there's tax, 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 tax. They say, oh, okay. Well, listen. Hey, I'm a, you know me, yep. Hey, my friend over here, someone who I've done business with for years, they're great. 99 times out of 100, I'm gonna be like, well, I'm gonna go with that person. Thank you. If you trust them, I don't have to go through all this traffic over here to try to figure out who I feel good about, whatever. I trust you. If you trust them, I'm definitely gonna go in that direction. That's also happening right now. So as people are taking their businesses virtually, please don't, don't get off the course. Yes, we're still looking for clients, still looking for collaborators and competitors, but let that main focus be that collaborator and competitor. Lastly, now with the COVID-19 weapons check, before without it, the weapons check was your business card. Now your weapons check is your virtual presence, is your weapon. Your virtual presence is your weapon. You need a strong logo. You need a logo that you feel good about. You need a logo that people are going to look at them. They're going to be like, oh, I like that. That looks great. Um, you want a, an a, appealing company slash product flyers. Every business should have at least three uh, electronic flyers. One is talking about their company. Another one is talking about the company's full-blown products, like all of the products that you have. And another should talk about a specific product, either your hot product, the one that's moving the fastest, or one that you really want to start moving the fastest. At least those three. They need to be, again, electronic format. They need to be social media, the difference between something that is vertical versus a square or like a rectangle versus a square, something that you can put on an IG or whatever the case is, but you definitely need to have those. Um, a functional website. And when I say functional, the most important part about the website is data capture. Yes, it should be some people take products and stuff like that, but it needs something to be data capture. When I say data capture, at the end of the day, we need to build database. You got to build your database. You got to build your database. If there's nothing that you get out of this, this presentation, you got to build your database. So you now need, and that's all networking is, is building database. You want to have something that's going to capture that person's data. Then you also want to have something that's going to make them want to give you your data. Give them something for free. If this website looks good and appealing, Somebody's going to give you their information. If it doesn't look good, then they're probably not going to give it to you. Um, next, your CRM system. 
If you don't know what a CRM system is, just gonna say, shame on you. You need to know what a CRM system, your CRM system is the heartbeat of your business. That is your customer relationship management system. That's your little black book for your business. If you do not have one, and here's the beauty. If you don't have one, now is the time to get one. You can go to MailChimp, you can go to Constant Contact, which technically aren't true CRMs, but they can be used as one. With that, you need something that is going to capture the phone, the first name, last name, email address, phone number, company name, and do some notes for this person where you, you, where you met them, how you met them, what their needs are, and things like that. Are they a potential client? Are they a potential collaborator? Are they a competitor of yours? You need something to segment these things out. I know I might be going to sound kind of deep for some people, but again, for business, this is one-on-one stuff. So again, if, you, if you're not familiar with this stuff, you can definitely reach out to me or uh, uh, Tar knows about this stuff as well. Maybe we should have another uh, workshop about this uh, in the future. And then uh, your social media platforms. When I say social media platforms, one, having the knowledge of them, but they also need to look appealing. You need to have a header on your, um, like your Facebook page and things of that nature on your LinkedIn. Know what social media platforms that you are strong in and which ones that you're not strong in. For me, for those of you that know me, I am not strong on social media. I am not, but I'm about to be. What's now happening is we all have to pivot. For a person who has produced so many face-to-face -face events, I this month, this month was my first actually attending a webinar. This webinar here is my first actually participating where I'm speaking as a webinar. On the 1st of April was my first that I produced webinar. So even though that I'm not <laughs> very much into the social media and online, let me tell you, I took a strong, hard pivot because my business needed it. My business needed it. And again, I'm not very good with the virtual stuff, but let me tell you, before we get out of this, I'm gonna be a guru when it comes to this stuff. And I'm gonna be just that much more dangerous out here in these streets as soon as we come out from this. Because now not only am I gonna be the king of face-to-face, -face, but the king of, of, of virtual, don't even get me started, Tar. I'm about to get on. Listen, don't, don't get me started. So virtual networking checklist, and I'll be wrapping it up from this. Again, uh, oops, there we go. Uh, virtual networking tips. Right now, there's so much traffic online, but that is not to deter you from getting out there and getting into the traffic. You get out there. It's better for you to be out there amongst everybody else than to not be out there at all. So definitely go live on your social media, where it's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn. Let people know you are still in business. Let them know that you are still in business. Let them know that you're okay. Let them know that you understand what's going on, that you are aware of it, that you are not scared, that you, you are, you, it has your attention. Yeah, you're recognizing it but you're still here and in business and let them know how you're going to pivot. Give them some strong, strong strategies of how you're about to pivot, how you're about to now do business. And you're hoping that they, especially the people who are already following you, that they support, which they will, which they will. If you had been um, building a relationship with a lot of uh, collaborators, and potentially competitors right now, the same way like Tara's, a, uh, Tara's a, uh, a collaborator for me, she called me and said, hey, how would you like to participate in my webinar? This is how that's done. So you wanna participate in other people's webinars. Right now, more and more people are gonna start having webinars, so you wanna make sure that you're known as that expert in that, in that uh, industry so that you can actually speak um, on that behalf for that industry. That's what's getting your name out there more, meeting more people. Schedule one-on-ones. Right now is a perfect time to go through your database and these recognized collaborators that you had to build in a better relationship with them. Shoot them a message, say, hey, listen, 
Um, are you free next week? Yes, I'm at home. Yes. With that, let's get on a Zoom for 30 minutes. Let me see your face. You can see my face so that we can actually learn about each other's business. I'm not calling you for money. I want to learn about it so we can be referral partners for each other. You should be doing to the very least, to the very least, one one-on-one a day. At least one one-on-one a day. And let me say it like this. If you feel good about your database, and I'm gonna say this, it's not me uh, bragging or anything, because I've put in a lot of work for this. Over these last years, I have a database of over 15,000 people in my uh, emails. I have close to 10,000 people on LinkedIn. And I still need to do one-on-ones. I still want to learn of people. But I feel very confident that in my database, that because of the number of people that I know, that I'm going to move past this epidemic. Even though I have a tax business, but then I have an event business where we received all of our revenue from face-to-face -face events. 100% of our revenue came from face-to-face -face events. And now the world is not having face-to-face -face events. So we now have to pivot. So I say that to say is that if you don't have a large database like that, then that's okay. It is now more important for you to actually do these one-on-ones so that each person who knows you, they know exactly what you do, how you do it, and what's a good client for you. You should be busy doing at least one of those a day, at least one. Again, build your database right now. It's all about building database. Who is going to make it out of this is going to people who actually used their database to their benefit. The ones who make it out of this are able to leverage their database and to extract revenue from their database. Those are the only people who are gonna make it through this. Lastly, collaborate. You know, I think about these, this picture that if, if, if you were in a boat with other people and somehow the, the boat, you know, blew up, but, but everybody was okay, but everybody's out in the water and they're all by themselves. You need to congregate, come together and come together to like on one raft. And if you guys are together, that's now where the strength comes in. So in your own business, if you are, um, I don't know, financial advisor, there's going to be other financial advisors, but there's going to be other people in that field, whether it's an insurance agent, whether it's a tax account, whether it's whoever, that is also having the same experience as you having right now. Call them and band together. Hey guys, listen, we're all having the same situation happen together. How about we actually go through this and do kind of like a united front? How about we actually go together and try to make a difference in here and see if we can take one client and bounce it around between each other and then add another client in and bounce it around between each other. And that's how we actually survived during this. So that is the end of my presentation, but I definitely, we're going to be um, here for some questions and answers, but really at the end of the day, it's really going to be about building that database, collaboration, and really trying to make sure that these one-on-ones is going to be super important. You let as many people know, what it is that you do and what you're looking for and again that you're still here in business so that's it awesome corey thank you so much um just to edify a couple things that you were talking about um the one-on-ones are very important rona had a great question like any suggestions to individuals still working full-time on how to do virtual networking so for example i'm doing um virtual coffee um, meetups where I, and I did one this morning. I had a virtual coffee meeting this morning and we did it through Zoom. And it was just me and another, a friend of mine. Well, she's a friend, I consider her a friend, but she's a business collaborator. And I say that because we do the same thing, but she is in a business where she wants to focus more on the marketing side and she doesn't want to do websites. So she was looking for someone to take that part of her business on. And then I don't want to do the marketing side. So I was looking for someone that can help a lot of my clients who have websites with marketing strategies. And so, you know, I had my coffee 
it was on Zoom. I hadn't seen her in like five years. So yeah. it was a great excuse to see each other face to face, have a conversation, learn more about what each of us were doing and then how we can collaborate um, and if there's synergy there. And so you do it at your own uh, convenience. If it's at night, um, you can have a cocktail, virtual cocktail. I don't care, but it's a great way when you have some time, you can schedule some time to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Now you don't have to do 20 all day long. Like he said, he, Corey said, you can do one, one a day. And it could be a quick phone call, just touching base, wanted to check up on you, see if you're okay. If you need anything, let me know. You know, it doesn't have to be a two or three hour um, conversation. It could be a 15 minute conversation, depending on the synergy that you have there. There's been people that I just wanted to get on the top of their phone list. So I'll call and check up on them. Not necessarily mean I want to have an, a 30 minute or an hour conversation with them. The conversation may last about five, five minutes, yeah. you know, or less yeah. than that. Um, like you said as well, like all of the meetings, I had five meetings, but three of them have been virtually. And so now is the new way. There's no excuse. And a lot of people have more time now. So this is the best way to connect with the people. Um, take advantage of the fact that they have time. Take advantage of the fact that extroverts are going crazy. They're going out of their mind. They're not okay. And so I am taking advantage of the fact that y'all are not okay. Y'all need something to do. You need to connect. So as an introvert, I cannot connect. But this is a great opportunity to connect with my extro extrovert accountants friends. Yeah. Because um, accountants are usually introverts. So, very much so. Extroverted accountants are very special, special, special people. Yes. So, Corey, those are amazing tips. And it's funny that those tips that were for years ago are still relevant today because, yeah, we're doing everything virtually, but eventually there's going to be, you know, a cure and we're not going to be quarantined all day long and like you said you don't want to create bad habits and then you lose the actual touch because there are some people that are extremely high touch and low tech people yes, yes. so Corey, so. how can people get in touch with you connect with some of your virtual uh webinar webinars that you're going to do and especially if they're in the atlanta georgia area how you know where can they find some networking events. Yeah, definitely. So one thing that I'm going to do is in the chat here, uh, I will put my information, which they can go to uh, pronetworker.com, which is our website. And the easiest thing to do is to go to pronetworker.com and you'll be able to see a place where you can actually put your email address in and you will now be a part of our newsletters that are going out. So you'll be able to see some of the things that we're doing. Um, you can also go to see us on Facebook under Pro Networker. You can join our group there. Uh, we have a host of different events that are, we had to push all of our events back. So uh, we have about three different event concepts um, under, when we have a Women's Business Expo concept, we have an uh, Urban Atlanta concept, and we have a Circle of Firms concepts all of these concepts have been pushed back but you can find out information about all of these if you go to pronetworker.com and uh and like to put your information in there you'll be able to see uh, see us there and also i'll put my email address in there which is corey at pronetworker.com you can always reach me there as well um just to find out about different things that's happening i am we just again we just did our first webinar last wednesday actually, which was uh, really good. We were very excited about it. I have another live, a live that I'm gonna be doing this Wednesday I'm looking at, that's gonna be announcing. I can't tell you about it, but we got something happening April 15th. It's a networking event, but it's unlike the networking events that are, that, that are happening right now. I haven't seen this concept yet with all the traffic. I have not seen this concept yet, but I'm gonna give you a hint. If you have been to a pro networker event years past, there was one element, and, and don't, don't say anything, but there was one element that we had a part of our event that pretty much people knew our event from us. So with that, we actually bringing back that element and we're gonna do it virtually. Really? Yeah. Yes. Y'all gonna do that virtually? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
they not ready. They not ready. They not ready. Look, I gotta go. So, this is how y'all do that one. Yes, yes, we're gonna do it virtually. So with that, we're gonna make that announcement on Wednesday. Part of that announcement, you go on to pronetworker.com, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a place where you can actually enter in your uh, your email address and all of that. So you'll get that information. That is awesome, Corey. Thank you again for sharing the information and for being a resource for us. I really appreciate you. You, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for.